good morning. So last night, we actually stayed in an RV park because for some reason, and I didn't realize it, my solar panels had disconnected. So I wasn't getting power from my solar panels for three days. And yesterday afternoon, I realized that my power was super low. So it was like maybe a fourth of it left, but now I'm at full power because I've been charging all day and all night. It only takes like maybe two hours to get fully charged when I'm plugged in like that, but it was definitely nice to have this uh, spot last night though and get that power. And I also ran my diesel heater all night long because it was 20 degrees last night in El Paso, Texas, so it was freezing. And it's still pretty cold out. It's like 35 out today, but it's not too bad. So it is currently 10.53. I gotta be out of here by 11 o'clock. But before I actually leave the park, I'm gonna go take advantage of the showers they have and take a quick shower. People like us who are like, hey. This RV park actually have pretty good views. Got mountains that way, mountains that way, mountains back behind us. Would have been a little bit nicer if they weren't all blocked by RVs, but I think right in there is where the showers are. And I'm really hoping this building has some kind of heat because it is freezing out today. There we go, showers and laundry. I wish I'd known they had laundry, I would have done some while I was here. Beautiful. Nice toilet, shower, and a mirror. That feels good. So I actually haven't started my day with a shower in so long. I've ended my days with showers after the gym and stuff, but I haven't been able to get up and take an actual shower first thing in the morning pretty much since I left. So this was pretty amazing. And I feel way better about starting my day like this. Beautiful day out here in Western Texas. All right, let's get out of this RV park and back into the wilderness. So for those of you keeping track on the journey from Key West all the way up to Alaska, so far, according to my car, I don't know if you can see it, but we've driven a total of 4,642.5 miles so far, and we still got a long way to go as we're pretty much directly next to the Mexican border. So although we're making progress, we are still pretty far, and I'm going to be taking this trip as slowly as possible just because I don't want to get up to Alaska when it's covered in snow and the roads are horrible. So ideally, the plan is right now that I'm going to be there at the end of April, but that really depends on the weather and the road conditions and whether it's going to be a smart idea to drive up there at that time. So I guess we'll see, and maybe worst case, we'll have to push it back a month or so, but we're definitely going to make it to Alaska. So the spot that I'm currently headed to is like 30 minutes away. And since we're right on the edge of where the uh, border of New Mexico and Texas is, it's technically in New Mexico, but it's down some dirt country road and we're finally getting into some BLM camping. And I get a lot of people ask me, what is BLM camping? And it's basically just Bureau of Land Management. So the Bureau of Land Management manages a bunch of land all over the West Coast. And it's essentially free land where you can do whatever you want. You can camp, you can shoot guns, you can uh, go out there and ride dirt bikes. and. Today, we're going to be using it for camping. All right, so right here is where it turns into the dirt road and heads back into the desert. So I've got about three miles down this dirt road until we get to the entrance of where all of the supposed camping spots are, so I'll check in with you guys once we get there. Okay, so this is it. This is where we should be able to go back and find a campsite for the night. All right, so I'm gonna pull in here and see if I can find something. All right, so I think I'm just gonna take this spot right here at the end of this kind of gravelly point.
Definitely a pretty nice spot out here in the desert. Although it doesn't feel like the desert because it's really cold out here. We also got a pretty nice view from up here of the entire valley, the mountain ranges, pretty much surrounding us on every side. There's a bunch of animal poop though. Don't know what kind of animal that's from, but this is it. So it's just kind of like this gravel point out here on these kind of gravelly dune looking things. And that is going to be our home for the night. And the best thing about this spot is, at least so far, there's no bugs, so I can keep my doors open. Actually, you know what? I think I might turn around and back into the spot. So my doors open up over this view. Look at that. Such a nice view out the back. Ooh, it is pretty cold out though. So I think before I do anything in the van, I'm gonna kind of walk around the spot and I feel fine leaving it open and stuff because I'm not gonna wander too far, but, and there's also not a single soul out here. Doesn't really look like much, just a bunch of dirt roads that lead kind of to nowhere. All over the ground is trash and specifically trash from shooting guns, like, like little ammo shells, ammo boxes, clay pigeons, that kind of stuff. So. I guess a lot of people come up here to shoot guns, which is pretty common. A lot of the times when you go to BLM spots, there's a ton of just gun trash all over the place. So yeah, I guess there's really not that much around here. I mean, that mountain range in the distance and the view out here is unbelievable. There's the van all the way over there. But yeah, anyways, let's head back to the van, maybe play some video games. Look at her, isn't she beautiful? So before I hop on and start playing video games, I wanna make myself a quick breakfast. I haven't eaten anything yet. And I actually do have really, really good internet speed up here. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm getting 340 megabytes per second up here on the top of this mountain in the desert because there is a tower that I can see down in the town right below us. So that's perfect. 400 megabytes per second is extremely good Wi-Fi. Those of you who don't know. So we definitely won't be lagging. And I'm not really cooking breakfast today. I'm just making some steel cut oats. There we go. Nice, quick, simple breakfast. So for those of you who don't know, and maybe this is your first time watching my channel, I do have a couple of options for Wi-Fi and playing Xbox when I'm in kind of remote areas like this. So the first of which is just my phone, which is typically the fastest, especially when it's 5G, like it is right now. So I'm getting like 400 megabytes per second. And then I also have my Orbic Verizon hotspot as just kind of a backup that I have Velcro to the wall right here. And then I also have an AT&T hotspot that's kind of mounted, so you can kind of see it back there, mounted to the wall right there in this cabinet. And I have it mounted in there because it has these big, bright blue lights that would keep me from being able to fall asleep. So I mounted it inside the cabinet, but I'll pull up my phone real quick and we'll test the internet speed on all of them. So right now I'm connecting to all data, which is the AT&T hotspot that I have up in my cabinet. And we're gonna see how fast the internet speeds are on that. So pretty good, not too bad. 12 megabytes per second, way slower than my phone, but more than doable for playing video games. I've played video games on one megabyte per second before. You really don't need a ton of data to play games. You just need a ton of data to download them, which is what I did yesterday. I updated and downloaded all of my games. So now they are finally all playable. And then the last one is my Orbic hotspot. All right, so I'm connected to my Verizon hotspot. Refresh this page and see what kind of internet speeds we're getting with that. Actually not too good. We're only getting two megabytes per second on that one, which obviously isn't as good as my other two Wi-Fi's, but even that is more than doable to play video games. So I think first I'm gonna hop into a game of Call of Duty and see how good the connection is and if there's any lag. And I'm playing with my headphones over my hood because it's kind of cold out today. Also, another cool thing about living in a van is that everything is within arm's reach, so if I ever need a drink, I can just open up this fridge. It doesn't open up all the way, but it opens up enough for me to reach in and grab something and I can just grab myself a drink. And then if I get hungry, my pantry's right here so I can reach in and grab a snack. So it's pretty cool. It's like the ultimate gaming setup. And I get a spectacular view out of my window. And right now we're getting 60 ping, which isn't the best, but it's also really not the worst.
All right, so I just got finished my second game and it's actually pretty cold out. I think it's like 39 degrees out. So I turned on my little diesel heater and I just pointed it right towards me and it's blowing out such nice warm air. It feels so good. And I don't really care about the heat loss through the doors at all because it's just kind of keeping me warm right now. While I play games and then I'll turn it off a little bit later and then kick it on again when I go to bed because I filled up my diesel tank for my diesel heater yesterday. So I'm full on fuel. So I also just recently re-downloaded Rocket League. So I'm gonna hop in there and see if I can play a few games of that too. Ayo. There we go. There we go. First game, not too bad. I think I only need one more game to get my placement. So I'm gonna play that real quick and see where we're placed and then maybe make some lunch. All right, we got placed in Platinum 2. It's not bad. We're not having played in like a year and a half, but I think I'm gonna get these doors closed and just keep the windows open because it is getting kind of cold in there now. And it's only supposed to get colder tonight from here on out. This is like the coldest night it's been so far in El Paso in the last three days since I've been here. So it kind of sucks that tonight was the night that it had to be cold, but whatever. Still nice to be out here and enjoy the uh, nice views. All right, so I've had the heater running for about 10 minutes back here with the doors closed and it's already 75 degrees and it's 40 degrees outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and then uh, kick it on again later when it gets super cold tonight because it's supposed to get down to like 23, 22. I think for now, I'm just gonna make myself a quick lunch and I still have some taco meat left over from those Doritos Locos Tacos. So I'm just gonna make myself a quick burrito. So one of the other things that I don't feel like is kind of talked about a lot in the van life social media world is that even though these spots can be super beautiful like this one, use the mountains, no people around, peace and quiet. There really isn't that much to do once you get to them. Second to admiring how beautiful they are. So you might be thinking to yourself, Ryan, why would you come to such a beautiful spot just to sit there and play video games? Hang on, actually I need a drink real quick. God, it's so warm in the van. It feels so good in there. But what I was saying, the answer for me is kind of twofold. So I've been traveling for two years and I've stayed at probably a hundred or so spots that are just like this or maybe even better than this. And there comes a point where after a while, the novelty of it kind of wears off. So it's not as exciting after two years, but I still do enjoy it. I'm just not gonna come up here and spend an entire day staring out over a valley because the second reason is if there's not much else to do, you can only stare at a view for so long before you kind of get tired of it. So that is essentially my answer to why I would come up here and just play video games and not sit out here all day. Also, it's like freezing cold outside. It's like 35 degrees, so wouldn't be the most fun just sitting out here all day. But it definitely is nice to be able to come out here and enjoy a meal. That is definitely one thing I will always step out of the van to enjoy a view with is a meal. I will say though that even though the novelty of it is kind of worn off, sitting up here in complete silence and just being able to appreciate the beauty of this country is pretty spectacular. Before I lived in the van, I never truly realized how breathtaking so much of America's landscape is. But man, it is cold out here. So I think I'm gonna head back in the van and probably just play video games until the sunset. Maybe I'm too emotional. Maybe you never cared at all. All right, let's play some video games. It's time to hop off. It's been about two and a half hours of playing video games. And for those of you who are curious, I played for probably three and a half ish hours total. And I started out with pretty much a full battery bank in the van. And right now I currently have 
232 out of 250. So just about a little bit more than one sixth of my battery that I used playing for three and a half hours. And that was with these lights on for most of the time, which used twice the power that my entire Xbox setup uses. So in reality, it probably should have been a lot less power used than I did. But even with these lights on, it used basically no power and I could play all night long into the morning if I really wanted to. But we can't do that because I don't want to melt my brain or my eyeballs. So I think I'm gonna make some dinner. But before I do that, I wanna take you guys outside because you probably can't see anything, but it is now dark out. But the entire city skyline, you can see out in the distance and it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna go show you guys that. I hope that you guys are gonna be able to see it too. It's real creepy. But look at that. It's like that, you can't see my finger. You can kind of see it in this, if I block the light, but that is like the entire city down below us. And it looks so cool being up here. It feels like I'm in like a airplane or something. Anyways. It is super dark and creepy out here, so I'm gonna go inside. But I think for dinner tonight, I am just going to make some chicken noodle soup. So I'm gonna keep this recipe super simple and just do it all in one pot because I think I have all of the ingredients that I need to make some chicken noodle soup. Basically, brown out of the pasta, the veggies, and then the chicken. There we go. Cooking up nice. All right, I think that is just about done. It's a very hearty soup. And I like making it like this where it's less broth and mostly just kind of noodles, veggies, and chicken because it stores easier. And then with my leftovers, I can just add more chicken broth to my cooked chicken noodle soup later and heat it up in the pot. And it's just as good. So I never use a uh, ton of chicken broth when I actually cook the chicken noodle soup. Also, for those of you who are curious what my power setup is like, if you're trying to gauge how much you want to put in your van, if you're thinking about building a van, I have 300 amp hours of lithium batteries in my battery bank. I have 600 watts of solar on my roof and I have a 30 amp DC to DC charger that charges my battery bank while my van is on. And I'm actually thinking about upgrading that one or getting a second alternator soon uh, so that I can get more of a charge when I'm driving the van because 30 amps really isn't that much. But so far on my trip, it has been more than enough. I typically never go below half of what my battery bank is. So I think if you wanted the same setup, you'd be more than fine with half of the battery capacity that I have with a similar solar setup and a similar battery charger. If you wanted a similar setup like me, I would think you wouldn't need more than 150 amp hours to be able to play Xbox or game or do whatever you want in a van without really having to think about it. A lot of the times, most of my charging comes from the fact that I drive around so much and that um, it's constantly recharging while the van's running. So that is also something to think about. Anyways, that's another dinner down alone on the road. I think I'm probably just going to clean up and then maybe watch a movie or play some more Xbox. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.